In today's video, I'm going to be going over all the settings and the parts I use to get Moto Vlog footage and audio like this. This one obviously has cruise control as well. We're in sport mode. The standing position with the foot pegs and the height of the bars is like poop. So I'm not claiming to be an expert in moto vlogging. I haven't been doing it for that long. But what I am is a professional full-time wedding photographer slash videographer. And the core camera settings you're gonna change are the same regardless of the camera you're using. Whether it's a professional Sony full-frame camera or a GoPro like we're using here today. Now there's one thing getting good quality GoPro footage and it's another thing getting cinematic good quality GoPro footage. The difference between the cinematic footage and the normal one is the cinematic footage has motion blur in the shots. That's the main thing that you're seeing if you're wondering why it's because they're using motion blur. That leads us onto the parts you're going to need. So in this case I'm using a GoPro Hero 8 and I also have the new GoPro Hero 11. The good thing is the settings between them don't change at all. So this is going to apply from any GoPro as far as I know from the 7 all the way up to the latest 11. Some of the installation might vary depending on the helmet you're using but it's more or less the same as long as you can remove the cheek pads from the helmet. The helmet I'm using is the Shoei Xperit 3 and the mount I'm using is from Moto Mounts and they are a New Zealand company. I'll put the link to their website in the description if you guys want to buy a mount for your helmet. Now for this particular setup I'm using the GoPro Hero 11 Black. I'm using an ND16 filter or an ND32 filter which we'll get into soon. The media mod and just a cheap lapel mic that goes inside my helmet. If you don't want to buy the media mod or it's not available to you, you can buy the mic adapter from GoPro. It just means you have something else that you need to stick on the side of your helmet. I've only been using this media mod. This is the first time I've bought one. I just happened to pick it up with the GoPro 11. It just cleans it up a little bit and means you can plug a microphone straight into the back of it without having to do anything else. Now to get good quality audio, either way you're gonna to wanna to put a lavalier or a lapel mic is another name for it inside the helmet and plug that into either the media mod or the mic adapter from GoPro. The trick to finding a good lapel mic that works directly with GoPros is to make sure it's a TRS one, which means it has two lines on the input pole. Some of them have three, some of them have one. You need a TRS which has the two stripes on the uh, input otherwise it's not going to work with your gopro the next trick is finding a microphone that has the lowest sensitivity you can find the problem with getting good quality audio from a gopro with a lavalier mic is uh, you're getting peaking in the audio which means it's like clipping on the higher levels and that's where you get that distortion that you hear in uh, some videos so finding one that is a lower sensitivity is going to be the trick and quite often that's cheapest over more expensive the next trick with audio is where you place the microphone so in my helmet I have it tucked just in the cheek pad here and that's what you're going to see most youtubers doing but the trick is to tuck it just in behind the cheek pad and if you can put a uh, fluffy they're called dead cats over the microphone itself and just tuck it inside the cheek pad and hide all the rest of the wires up in there as well so as you can see there's no need to over complicate it you can just buy a cheap lavalier microphone plug it straight into the media mod or the mic adapter and you're good to go with audio just make sure it's placed correctly. Now the last thing to do with hardware is the filters I was talking about. Now ND filters, otherwise known as neutral density filters, are basically just sunglasses for your camera, allowing you to keep a lower shutter speed and not overexpose your image. Some of these terms might not be familiar to you if you know nothing about photography or videography, but just trust me when you need an ND filter and the purpose is to keep your shutter speed low. Again, we wanna use ND filters so we can get our shutter speed manually set to 1 50th of a second. The only filters you're really gonna ever need for most situations is an ND16 and an ND32. The ND32 is slightly darker than the 16. The 32 you're going to be using if you're outside during the day and it's nice bright and sunny. If it's a little bit cloudier or sunset you know going into that twilight hour you're going to want to use the ND16 filter. But while you're getting used to it you can just chuck each filter on your camera, have a look through the back of the screen and make sure the sky isn't blown out or overexposed. One thing with ND filters it varies a little bit depending on the camera you're using so this GoPro Hero 8 I have here has a little clip mount that goes over with magnetic filters 
um, it's quite handy that doesn't work for the GoPro 9 10 or 11 I think I believe with those ones certainly on my GoPro 11 you have to take the actual clear lens off and replace it with the ND filter so just search ND filters for your particular GoPro and you'll have a whole bunch of options I'll put some in the description for the 7 8 and the 9 10 and 11 so let's get into the settings now. For this example, I'm gonna be using my GoPro Hero 11 Black. I know for sure that the settings are gonna be exactly the same from the 7 all the way up to the 11. So if you have any of those GoPros, possibly for the older ones. So firstly, go into the main menu and into the general settings. You're gonna to need to do that first. I have the beep volume on high because I like to be able to hear it when I'm riding over my uh, motorbike and I have quick capture on. That just means that when you're riding, you can instantly press the record button when the camera's off it's going to turn it on start recording and then when you press the record button again it's going to turn the camera off anti-flicker is the setting i was talking about when it changes your shutter speed to either 50th of a second or 60th of a second really you can think of it as 50 hertz is for new zealand and 60 hertz is for america so in this case we're going to set anti-flicker to 50 hertz and it's going to change our frame rates for us in the next section next you're going to touch on the little menu down the bottom of the screen where it says standard or whatever profile you have it set to and then tap the edit to go into that profile or whichever profile profile you want to set these settings to. First starting off with resolution and frame rate which is FPS you're going to click on that. For 4K you're going to want to set it to 16 by 9 4K resolution and a 25p frame rate. The lens view I have on is super view. Uh, this new GoPro has that hyper view function but I'm not too keen on the way it looks. It's just a little bit too distorted for me so I stick with super view. Hyper smooth we're going to leave that on obviously because it is nice and smooth. Now going into the pro tune settings these are the really important ones. If you have a GoPro 11 you're going to want to put 10 bit on. That's just getting you the best color possible for editing later in post. Trust me, if you have a GoPro 11, put 10 bit on. If you have a 10 or before, you're not gonna have this option, so don't worry about it. You are gonna have the option for bit rate and you just wanna put that on high for the best quality. And then where it says shutter, that's where you're gonna set it to 1 50th of a second to get that motion blur. EV comp, I just have set to NA or zero. We don't need to use that. White balance, I have set manually to 5500K. Now 5500K is basically daylight balance, so that's gonna be fine for any morning rides, day rides, or sunset rides. The next two settings are really, really important. ISO minimum and ISO maximum. These ISO settings are what we're going to use to let the camera automatically adjust our exposure when we ride through different situations, under a bridge, through a tunnel, etc. So the minimum ISO you're gonna to set to 100. And then the ISO maximum I have set to 800. You can change it to 1600 if you want, but the higher you have it set, the more image quality you're gonna lose and the more grain you're gonna introduce into the image. 1600 is okay, but it does get a little bit grainy. So I have mine set to 800. Sharpness, I have mine set to low because I'm adding sharpness in post-production in my editing software. If you don't wanna do that, I would suggest setting the sharpness to medium because high is just a bit too extreme. Color, I have it set to flat because again, I'm color grading it in post. I definitely wouldn't recommend GoPro color. If you have the GoPro 11, I'm not sure what the previous one ones are but you also have the option of neutral or vibrant if you're not editing it I would probably stick with at maximum neutral but flat is best for editing and post-production raw audio I have set to off because in my testing it doesn't really make any difference and you don't want over processed audio anyway wind reduction I have set to off because uh, we have the microphone inside the helmet and that's taking care of all the wind noise for us and I don't want the camera processing the audio for me and that's pretty much it in terms of settings so if you roll with those settings you're going to get really nice quality footage as long as you have that ND filter on the front like I said stick with either the ND16 or the ND32 depending on how bright it is outside Again, the ND32 is a little bit darker for those really bright days, and the ND16 for slightly overcast days or riding around closer to sunset. In terms of color grading the footage, that is a more advanced technique you're gonna to have to learn how to do. Um, I do have presets available over on my other channel, which I'll put a link to in the description. But like I said, I wouldn't bother purchasing those unless you're really getting into it and have proper editing software. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.